exactly where we are sitting here, uh, right here uh, at Oyun, through a lot of people who used to talk about her with her through people I met here. And then, then her words were, of course, like so timeless and powerful messages that are also relevant. Living right. Rongin Shagor in Bengali, it means colorful ocean. And uh, this is a project that we want to kind of messages through her poems that are so important for people that are living here and also living across globally. And it, it felt that we want to kind of start knowing her again through the people who know, knew her personally and also people who knew of her. And that's how I came to know also, um, started reaching out to people like Katharina Agantoy. And, uh, and that's how we kind of visioned this uh, Rungin Shagor to grow over a period of time where different artists from different um, spaces could respond to her in their own artistic interpretations. And then I reached out to Anya, <laughs> um, who has been also a beautiful influence with her beautiful words. <laughs> and she's been an artist. I'm fortunate to curate this journey together of Rangin Shagar. And which, um, yes, and thank you so much for being part of it. And I'm looking forward to the journey with everybody uh, who's going to be part of it for as long as it's possible. Thank you so much. <laughs> hello, hello. So beautiful to see all of you here. Um, it's quite packed. I did not expect your presence is felt. Thank you so much for sharing your time with us. Um, told me it's starting with a poem by Maya Yim. I was like, oh, nice, okay. Um, but isn't Maya Yim so known already? Do we really need another project to make her work known to the world or to people, especially in Germany? And shortly after, I realized, yes, yes, we do. Um, I'm a poet, um, artist, writer, and in my journey of poetry writing, I've realized that deconstructing language in English um, is what I mainly want to do. But who has done that in German, actually? Who has done that from audiovisual um, performance um, in any way there is? And um, shortly after, of course, uh, we started thinking, okay, how can we start Rongin Jagor? How can we somehow um, execute this vision that uh, Madumita had uh, for Rangin Shagor and how do we pay tribute to Maya Yim. Um, I'm lucky enough to have a wonderful um, photographer, artist, writer as a friend, um, Akim Boda Akimbi. Um, yes. <laughs> who I knew was uh, living at the time and fortunate enough to um, be of you who had the chance to see the exhibition above um, the person sitting next to me is Muhammad Salah Abdelaziz, artist, photographer, um, and also a very good friend. Um, hello, everyone. I was saying, and Madhu as well, so many of you have come. It's really very, very um, welcoming, very, very good. Huh? Um, this evening is going to be a sort of free, open, um, yeah, um, no years. Huh? And then unfortunately, she had a kind of um, breakdown. And um, then on, uh, eventually um, passed on. It was a very, very sad moment. Huh? But the community then came together. There was a very, very strong memorial for her. And then later on, the, the, um, the funeral. Huh? So, okay, now let's start with our um, conversation, Mohammed. Bodhi, please tell us about the photographs and about also your personal relationship to my Aim and uh, 
to the overall context of Britain at that time. So m probably some of you already know I'm a, I'm a, I'm a passionate photo photographer. My way not if I'm, I'm not a stroller, that's the, um, um, what's the word, the uh, translation into graphs. But I was thinking today also to observe, uh, but beyond you know, like moved actually to Berlin, so I was photographing seriously, you know, every day, every day going out, especially around Potsdamer Platz. Uh. So one of the images in the show upstairs in high rises around it. Uh. So um, one of these, but also um, two images of Berlin then, uh, which gives you a kind of context to this. The um, it's it's uh, it's filled for uh, you know it, it's. Uh process of looking at photograph as the process of listening before actually seeing. So I'm really interested in the correlation between poetry and... <laughs> um, I always claim that before you see, you listen. So the ears are actually the, one of the most sensitive organs on our body, on our physical cloak. Huh? And um, with sound, being people often not so aware, but still like quite demanding around. So these are all the kind of things that I'm constantly um, engaging with, trying to, um, <clears throat> yeah, so to understand as I move through spaces, as I negotiate. But I mean, we're also very different. So some people, yeah, they don't want to think about um, certain things or they're not very interested in other matters, so they don't really, they're already more. It's, we go on to other, um, it's, so if, if you've been very something back, huh? so this is a kind of, um, again, this um, is, is the same similar the other day I was here in Berlin of then, but also now as well. Huh? So this is something, again, uh, which I say it's, it's very much an individual thing, very subjective, but at the same And uh, photographs. So I'll open the images and just look at them. Time is actually is fixed. <laughs> we move through as best you can. Huh? And then you realize over time. So then looking back like 30 years ago, I can remember some, some moments with my Ayim for, to, for you to be very so grounded in your, your, your own zone, so to speak, your time zone. And, um, but being, being aware of always oh, in any way you like as, as possible. Huh? And I always say actually, all of us are actually creative beings huh? in, in any kind of way, even right down to simple things like aggressive family or conservative family, all kinds of stuff. It's all crazy at times. But I'm very much for being very open. And <laughs> what, I, what I call a golden oldie, your 70s, your 80s, your 90s, you're still willing to learn. Huh? And then also to learn from... So, and then I realized that it's always about... In fact, during, uh, when they started with the pandemic and social distancing and wearing masks. Those times it was cloth masks. And I, I would never have done that. I would still go out. Huh? I have a friend of mine um, who was in Nigeria doing your own private space, your apartment or your house or whatever it is. Be aware of how you're moving huh? and your body movements. So in my wandering, I'm very try I try to be as conscious as possible. Huh? And um, it's, it's interesting. You... you you, you use your eyes to see, huh? at least I do. Huh? So <laughs> I'm trying to observe my um, things. But it's not what you read. A certain um, Kreuter, um herb or certain ingredients they put in the food upset me. So I, I cool down. So I, try, I don't actually go out eating a lot. Huh? For, that's one of the reasons. I prefer to cook myself, things like that. Huh? And um, the company you keep. Yeah, and also, the, I mean, the spaces you're moving through. 
sensational images. I'm not going to go to the um, to try to. I don't post the images or be a missionary or anything. But is to be what you call it, um, fadaung. What do you call fadaung in English? Your digestion, <laughs> um, everything. Huh? You, the taste. You know, your, your skin. We were talking about that the other yesterday. All these things I think are very very important. Um, uh, maybe, maybe I can just say something because. Um, in moving through spaces, for example, I've been living in Europe now for 50 years. I'm in Germany. So now I'm a black person, so I have a dark, um, um, black skin, or I'm a brown skin. I'm moving through white spaces. I'm very much aware of this. But so many times my um, surroundings are not aware of this. So much so that I, I, have it, I, can, I can take images, sometimes intimate images, and they don't, they don't even know I'm around. Uh, but I'm a black person. Huh? But now, very interestingly, in Nigeria, the total uh, total opposite. People are very aware of you as a photographer, especially, and they often come up to you. What are you doing? Why are you doing this? You know. But here, very, very, very rarely. Huh? So again, this is what, what I mean about being very conscious, aware, and we spoke about this yesterday again. You you actually um, you form your own path through this. Um, spaces through this, um, I'm what I call the urban space, but also the rural space. Huh? And you, you f f like forge your way through. Sometimes things come your way, and then you have to decide now: Do I engage with this particular um, moment, this particular person, this particular incident, or do I move on? Something I spoke of years ago is like a dance. Huh? So I'm actually dancing with my environment constantly. Huh? Over the years, I've been attacked at times, huh? sometimes by the police. But I was talking to some, some friends of Marika about this, the, uh, or, or by um, other individuals. Once was it was in Brazil. In What's wrong? Why are you looking at me like this? Huh? And again, it's it's a kind of animals don't act. In essence, it's like like the, oh, it took me a really hard time to kind of like Baldwin referred to as that he did not know he if I was making landmarks for myself or Luffy as a or writing or poetry as a form of self to see. Huh? But actually. It's more from the heart or from the solar plexus. That's where you can really begin to see and sense and from your ears as well here. Spirits out there, very destructive. So you have to sort of negotiate those kind of dangerous spaces. But um, yeah, it's knowing, yeah, knowing wh where you stand and understanding. That's why it's an everyday thing. You have to know what is actually within you. Where, yeah, what's my standpoint? Where, what, what am I looking at? What am I trying to, to take, make? I've, I deliberately do not say shoot. I don't like that word shoot, especially now with so much gun violence. But um, it is true, uh, the camera is actually, it's, it came out very much from the gun. Huh? You know, the focusing on, on the sights, on the, the, you know, the, view, the viewfinder, press the shutter, you know, you take, make, capture. You've shot the image, and then you have things like snap, snapshot, <laughs> all kinds of stuff. Um, I, I always, I still do inter interrogate, interrogate these terms, and I'm also very, very. I try to be as aware as possible of what it is I am trying to um, to take, to to make, huh? and certain things like um, uh, what do you call or something, ex you know, very exceptional. Yesterday and yeah, yesterday, um, somebody lying on the ground. This was in Friedrichshain, uh, sleeping, uh, but obviously homeless. So now I'm asking myself, what am I going to do with this image? Why am I doing these kind of images and so on and so forth? I've been working on this for years, uh, actually for decades, and it, it gets so intense at times that you sometimes you feel uh, the next thing I could be the homeless person. Uh. At the same time, it's it's a narrative. I'm trying to. Um, not understand homelessness, I, I, I think I have some kind of understanding of it, but I'm trying to say something about it. Then what? And again, like you were saying, the colonial gaze, looking down, so sometimes you can put me, but it's going on. 
things like that. So, so this is something I really, really am very interested in, and I do make photographs questioning what is a photograph. Huh? Perhaps some of you saw my, um, my exhibition in the Martin Gropius Bar two years ago, and one particular section was very much about this, huh? about photography and some other... Visual that is by that thing to be. So um, this is my last remark, so would you like to add anything? And uh, we open it for Q&A. Uh, um, blind people actually see more than um, non-blind people, huh? or people who have a um, way of coming on Earth. Huh? And a doctor... learned the language yet. So during the workshop, there was a one young girl, she was five or six, and she was just sitting there, but she couldn't hear, could get the, um, the sound from the, from the floor, from the, uh, they were very much into the, the uh, with this um, very, for me, disadvantaged children. But then the um, leader of the workshop, a British man, a very nice guy, he said, buddy, don't worry. First of all, just treat them like normal people. It's a fact. In fact, um, what because we spent about five days there all together, and the, the children amongst themselves they really tease each other and they make jokes about their disabilities. <laughs> well, I was even laughing with them. Very beautiful moment. So they actually, as I said again, we're all in one big family, yeah? and what we call disabilities, or like you were saying now, if you're blind, to explain to somebody who can't see a, an image. Um, um, uh, yeah, I, I agree, and I have to make an intervention here because uh, 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 this whole questioning is not coming from a sense of ability. That's it. While where I come from, to open up the the space now for Q and A. Uh, please, if you would like to. <laughs> Don't be shy. Okay, I'll go first. Um, thanks for this um, exchange, mainly perceptional rather than heady. But um, the question still remains when you with the camera. I take my camera out literally every day and um, take, make images. And the idea is actually a narrative. Huh? Like I was saying about um, homeless, I was telling my daughter again <laughs> the other day. Um, no, it wasn't my daughter. I, I don't know. I know. I was telling somebody um, many years ago. We were in Munich and the English Garden in summer, and then the, we were going past maybe some kind of beer cells uh, where they drink beer, you know. And we saw a young girl outside the cells, obviously somehow distraught, uh, emotionally distraught. Maybe her boyfriend had just left her or something. So. I wanted to go, <laughs> my daughter said, no, no, you can't do that. <laughs> and so I didn't. Huh? But I often thought about that incident. This was about 30, 40 years ago. I was often, I said, wow. So, um, yeah, it's, the other day I, I took a photograph of a young lady on her mobile phone in Chicago, um, she didn't. She she didn't know I was taking making the photograph story, but in in my in my case, not writing, you know, or using the um, the keyboard, but with images. Does the answer suffice? Connection, empathy, sense of communication with the object or subject in front of you. But to me, that's that's beyond catching, and so that's beyond voyeurism. I put that word in because it was almost like a provocation to say, here is a, an observer, and here is an object being observed, or a subject being observed, or intruded. And I think those margins and those distances or closenesses are really what art can be about in photography, in writing, or in just engaging and talking with each other. Just one second. Um, thank you. Uh, I, I would agree with you. There's a song, 
So I don't photograph conflicts or shootings or stabbings or whatever it is. I would rather try and stop it. But there are photographers who then... The to also um, react to your question by saying that, um, yeah, I think like my generation, we came and we found it kind of like set up and we're very privileged because Akim Bodhi can be in, uh, yeah. His colleagues kind of paved the way for African photographers, our generation, to find some, you know, resources that we can back, go back to. But um, I think my conduct was kind of like chasing this, whatever you call it, beauty, for example. You know, it was like a mirage that I'm trying to reach. And once I reached there, it was nothing, you know. And it became the next, you know, it became like photographing the other. You know, and I went to the other, it was not the other, it was me. So I feel like it's, it's actually a process, a continuous process of uh, learning about oneself as well. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Hi. So I have a question. One is, you were speaking about again being in the presence and being conscious and that you don't believe like death is necessarily the end of things right and you mentioned something about names so i was wondering what does your name mean my name or our names your name <laughs> people huh? so aki means other names but they were not like their um the name they they bore they was more like praise names or um names which describe what they're doing or something so um, Akinbiyi, I believe, was, yeah, that was now our family name, Akinbiyi, but was actually the name of, of one of my um, um, ancestors. And then as we come back again, uh, that's, f yeah, about it. Uh. But what's interesting with names is that, <laughs> again, that's very interesting because there, um, there's some deeper um, meanings for the word. I like came to Kampala in the, um, early, um, the late 19th century early 20th century, and built a fort in Kampala. So now, I call the work on Kampala Lugards, Lugards Avenue. But, um, you know, guard means like protect, protect um, what do you call it, uh, secure, makes a place secure. And Luik, Luik is some old Anglo-Saxon, I'm not saying it properly, eh? but like now pronounced Lugard, Lu, uh, means um, tribe, ethnic people. So you see, the man himself was actually living, you know, his name. I found it very interesting because, uh, by the way, there's a Lugard Avenue in, uh, in, in Lagos still. Uh, because he, he, he was one of the, um, the, I think he was one of the first governors of then the amalgamated um, Nigeria. Uh, but of, of, of Lagos, actually. Uh. Um, yeah, so the other day I was listening to um, someone called Onye Kanubia. He's also from Nigeria but lives in Britain. He's a... Uh, um, theorist and philosopher, and he was talking about names and naming, and um, it was the story about him. Uh, he was given a, a name. He was not given a name that he was supposed to have because his mom didn't give him the name because he was not an Igbo. He was a Yoruba, and the name was an Igbo name. And um, and after many years, until he started writing and, and publishing his own books, then he got the name Onyeka, which is an Igbo name that he was supposed to have. And uh, he said that names and wor are words, and words are vibrations. And so names are not. Feeling prophecy, maybe. We don't know. I have a second question, and then I'm going to give the mic away. <laughs> so about your friend, who the exhibition is about, right? How would you describe her? or your acquaintance, because I never got to meet her. Um, she was a very sensitive uh, um, Afro-German in a very, actually, <laughs> racialized society. Uh. It's a very, actually, very harrowing word she sometimes spoke about her, uh, and wrote about her, uh, and her poems too. Uh. Um, she, I, yeah, I found her a very generous, loving, caring person. Uh. I mean, there's much more to tell, but it's still, I'm still actually, um, what's the word, um, processing her passing, uh, which was almost uh, 30 years ago, because it was a very, very sad moment. 
she was too much too young and um yeah we are, like um Anya and Amadou said earlier I've read the book in German, but not in English. Yeah. Showing our colors. Yeah, showing our colors, yeah. And um, this is something else again. This is something also because there have been actually black people here in, on the continent and in Germany literally for centuries. Huh? But then the Germans say, oh, sometimes the Germans, well, I mean, this was years ago, I mean, when I first came, they say, no, but we've never seen black people before. There's a lot of rubbish. In fact, there's some old photographs. The circus people. There's a black person there, and there's so much, so so much about this. So these are the kind of things I think that, uh, and um, my aim was really. In the space, is it? How do you feel your presence on a day-to-day -day basis? And then the other question um, to Mohammed. You've, you've said you're trying to reclaim the colonial, like taking pictures and photography and shooting. And do you want to share any, any of your personal process? That would be great. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> First time about um, about the Caribbean islands, and uh, he said. He was thinking that if God created the islands, according to Camo, that he used to play skidding stones on the water. So that, he said, if God created the islands, he must skid a stone on the water because the islands are taking the shape. And then he said, then if God skidded a stone, what kind of music was he listening to? And then from that respect, he started realizing that it was the calypso, it wasn't the pentatonic, which was the, normally the, the way you write poetry. So for him, it was a call that, you know, looking at the, at the immediate environment and kind of like, you know, he called the process restoring one's broken imagination. So I had to go back to, I had to ask what photography is really about, and it's about light, and there is nothing more divine than light. And I had to go back to my own um, growing up. So um, I grew up in a, in a Sufi Muslim kind of like society and an environment. So I went back to the book, which was my foundation, and I traced light within that context. And it kind of gave me, cl gave me clarity as well uh, of how actually, yeah, it's, it's a process of understanding oneself in, in this cosmology of, of light, yeah. It's beautiful what Mohammed has been saying. And for the review, review we did for 11 years altogether. If any of you are interested, there's a publication about this whole process and also with works of the um, participants. It's called The Journey. Yeah? And you can buy it in some of the art bookshops here in Berlin. And it was a beautiful time. It was, we, it, um, about a week, once a year, in many different parts of the continent. Huh? And it was really well funded. And we really we had a very, very good time. And I, one thing I would want to stress, and I always stressed it then, we, the mentors, learned from the participants just as much as they learned from us too. Huh? It was a beautiful moment when um, we invited three from Su uh, Sudan. There had already been one before, but we invited three now to come and, uh, into the portfolio review as well. Uh. And afterwards, after the week, and um, I go out, and um, is that a good enough answer or? Answers for a few both, thanks. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. If you really are interested in photography, there have been some very, very good photographers all over the world. Huh? Before, it used to be very much European, American, but now they realize the photographers from all over all continents, huh? literally from the very word, from the very word go. Huh? By the way, the first photo book was not by a man, it was by a woman. Huh? Yeah, you see. So you know, it's you know, there have been some really powerful works out there. And you can uh, actually, it's, they're, like, they're, like, they're like poems as well. Yeah, I, I have to him. I have a question. Yeah, okay, so <laughs> thank you for, for all those words and all the experience. And we've been hearing a lot about what photography is. And I think my question is 
to both of you that have been doing photography for so long, what is photography not? You know, what is what is what are the limits of photography in in this time that you've been doing photography? That you. It's an interesting question. Um, there are no limits. You can do anything you really want to do with it. Huh? If you go to Hamburg and to the Triennial and the main exhibition is called Currency, there's work by a South African photographer, Joe Radcliffe, and she All internal. It, the outside is an extension of the inside. So how you perceive it is entirely dependent on you. And photographs can boot. Can only try to describe what it means. I was asking myself, do you, two, the two of you, do you see? In photographs is that if you hold an hour as a unit, If you look at that same photograph for, let's say, two, three years, uh, um, an embedded um, camera underwater, so he actually he thought it was something eighteen because, like, like Mohammed was saying, you, you, you can constantly break down the, the, um, the, the um, unit, or um, what do you call it, your, your, your kefir, your jaw, huh? and all your teeth. Huh? But if you look carefully at all these images over time, you begin to read the, actually what the teeth have done what they mean, what you know, who's whether it's, a, whether it's a woman's teeth or man's teeth, things like that. Huh? So it's literally endless. And then it's again, it's very individual. Huh? So I remember reading once about hunter gatherers huh, in Namibia, and apparently the hunters, especially, and they go out together in a group to hunt, but some are very gifted in reading um, footprints, not all. And this is what it is too with us as well. So even with photography and photographs as well, especially looking at photographs, is fascinating because it's endless, literally. Huh? I think I want to touch on a word, uh, one word you just said now because I'm really um, having trouble with it as well. We all, it's very subjective. So even authenticity still can be seen in so many different ways. Huh? When it comes to um, subjective appraisals, looking at photographs, in taking, making a photograph, there you begin to see, you can, you can see the differences. Huh? It's very interesting at times, some, sometimes, especially at big happenings, you know, um, concerts or whatever it is, you have many photographers, many of them more or less taking, making the same image, same image at the same time, but each is a bit, bit different. Fascinating, huh? So again, no two things are the same. So this is some kind of um, so deeper knowledge which goes down. So now again, also with photographs as well, no two photographs are the same. Huh? Fascinating. Even the same um, negative um, printed twice, subtle, subtle differences, sometimes so fine, it takes sometimes years to begin to see these differences. Huh? Hello there. I was wondering, have you ever been in a situation, because I'm just thinking about an article I read about the person who took the infamous picture and then was interviewed later what he did after taking that picture, and then I read that that person actually um, took their life after that interview. So my question is, have you ever taken a picture and then afterwards... Because I always wonder about the question of responsibility and consent as well. We were working in a township and there was a young man living on the, on the garbage dump. And it's an ongoing, literally again, everyday process. It gets to the stage where I, I, I will get to know him and then also try to find ways of, uh, look, I mean, 
but again, how far do I go? I mean, what do I, you know? This, and it's to see children on the street. Huh? This was the case years ago in Egypt, and it was terrible, terrible, terrible. Huh? I'm going into my, I had a sort of low, uh, low budget hotel, but the kids were on the street sleeping at night. Huh? Terrible. Huh? So things like that. Huh? And then again, the next question is okay, why didn't I bring up the, the kids into, into my room? Huh? So these are the kind of things there. But <laughs> you know, so, you know, these are, or, and this sometimes happens as well, organize and do. So. Maybe I can tell you another particular story. In Lagos, many years ago, in front, yeah, around a very expensive hotel, hotel a co hotel, huh, there was a lady totally spaced out. Huh? Horrible. But I did take, make two, three images of her over periods of weeks. Huh? Eventually, um, because I, I don't live, I was, I live, I'll be, at that time I was living in Berlin, but I, when I go home, I, I'll still be seeing her around. I, I didn't see her anymore. I learned that she had passed on her. What I didn't... You've taken away uh, back then. Um, and yeah, I, I noticed that um, her books uh, and the, the titles... Activists, because you colonizing that image yeah of Africa in your photography work, both of you. Uh, the protest camp told us that we had no right. Uh, I hope you were the right person to answer this. Do you feel the sense of uh, ownership when, whenever you take a... Uh, yeah, it's really, it's really... It's really tough because I feel like also decolonialism is born of, you know, the academic European institutions, so you kind of like work with the same epistemology and so on. But um, the question of authorship and agency, um, to the question of responsibility and agency, because, you know, like in the nitty gritty of the self, you know, like what do I call my ideas? Are they my ideas? Did I generate them? Uh, so I'm really like having a struggle because, I'm, you, you know, I'm, we're now today talking about my Ayim because, you know, we came like, if we came 27 years ago, we would have met her and, you know, she was there. So eventually all of us sitting here, we're going to be a story. And I, I'm, I'm really fascinated in like this passage of time, you know, and like, because you, you really never own anything, you know? Eventually, it's going to end up there as information anyways. So I don't necessarily see the work as my work, but I see that I could be a medium in which I, you know, brought up this work. Or I, at least I actually see, like, the purpose of the work of the creative, you know, uh, being my or being a Cambodian or being, you know, yourself. Uh, is actually to open up a conversation, for us to have these conversations and kind of like, you know, continue from where the others have stopped. You know, and, and, and I feel like, yeah, the, the also the whole question of blackness and, and, and Africa is really, yeah, but I'll leave that to you. What, what, what about this thing of ownership of the image? Like he was. I don't own my work. No, no, I mean, in, in his case, you know, where he, they wanted to use images, but the photographer said, no, you know, because I mean, in that particular case, I I don't know the whole um, peculiarities, but I think especially that because I I'm, I also was um, sometimes going to Orania Plus in th that time and taking making photographs. If you had asked me, no problem whatsoever. You can use my images, but um, I do know some photographers are very sort of, you know, I don't know, funny or weird about these kind of things. So. Um, to to return to your first um, point about um, decolon decolonizing the gaze on Africa, especially, uh, and you know, the way um, Africa has been represented in the media, I would say for about 100, 150 years, it's really crazy. Uh. So um, we and others as well, I mean, many of us on the continent, but me, I'm, I'm in the diaspora and so on, we are very much against this. Uh. And um, there are so many visual images to be told about Africa. This would definitely for sure. And then this, but this, um, uh, you know, 
Pacific way of seeing Africa as starving, or war, a disease as well. It's just, it's just, it's just mind blowing. Huh? It is fortunately changing, but still changing at a very, very slow pace. Huh? Um, there's a book I would really recommend it to you, written by Mark Seely. It's, it's, um, it's about decolonizing the gaze. Huh? And it's very, very important because even on the continent, you find photographers, these are African photographers, who, like just uh, Mohammed was just saying just now, still exoticize Africa, you know, uh, exoticize, you know, their own people sometimes. Huh? So rather than photograph every day, they want to go to the countryside and photograph some people who still live in a particular kind of way or this kind of thing, huh? which I find sometimes very upsetting, even going so, so fast. Pardon me? Sorry, yeah. So that, that, that's about it, really. Uh, um, unfortunately, sometimes now, you know, we have, I was talking to um, Ativa just now about um, the war in, in Ethiopia, I mean, other places, even in Nigeria, some th horrible things are happening. And I'm, I'm not saying that these things should not also be photographed and shown as well. Uh, but there's so many other narratives too. It's not just this particular one, so many other narratives. Huh? One thing is sometimes so fascinating. Very important. All right, thank you so, so much. <laughs> Colors that was mentioned in the talk as well. Uh, with my Ayim, um, has a fundraiser going on right now. We have a live stream and uh, the link will be posted in the live stream. Um, it would be great to see. Um, we will also be putting the link up on the Ayun Instagram, and just to make sure uh, to share it, please have a look, please share it widely, and please let's support each other. Um, that's all for tonight, today. Thank you so, so much.